Hey, so this video will be about volcano types and what they are and where they form on Earth. So let's start with the definition of a volcano. A volcano is an opening in Earth that erupts gases, ash, and lava. So different types of volcanoes form from different parts. Some volcanoes are mostly ash, while other volcanoes are mostly lava. There are over more than 1,300 volcanoes that are either active or dormant on Earth, but there are about 600 active volcanoes on Earth right now. The first type of volcano that we will cover is the world's most active, which is a hotspot volcano. So Kilauea has been erupting for over 37 years now. It is considered a hotspot volcano, and it has very dark basaltic lava. Hotspot volcanoes tend to erupt for long periods of time, like Kilauea does. Now, Iceland also has a hotspot volcano, but it's also on a divergent boundary. Both of these volcanoes could be considered shield volcanoes. So shield volcanoes tend to be associated with basaltic lava, meaning they are darker in color. You might also see the term mafic written down for basaltic lava. They also tend to be very quiet. So very little ash, sometimes more ash if you have a divergent boundary, but for a hotspot, very little ash and mostly lava. And the lava flows easily outwards through various layers. Over time, the lava flows build up and build up a shield volcano which can be very, very tall in very large ways. So Hawaii's Mount Kilauea or, Kilauea or Mauna Kea is actually the tallest volcano and the tallest mountain on Earth. It is not the highest because most of the mountain is actually underwater. Now, more about shield volcanoes. They're broad and flat, mostly flat. So they are the flattest of the volcanoes. And they also have very low silica content because the magma coming up from the mantle tends to have low silica and high metals, which is why basaltic lava tends to flow very easily. Silicon can cause lava to flow not very easily. So the Hawaiian Islands are a good example of shield volcanoes, but there are others out there on Earth. Some of them are associated with hotspots, some aren't. Now, a little bit more on a shield volcano. They tend to be made of mafic rocks, also associated with divergent boundaries, like in Iceland or both, like Iceland with a hotspot and a divergent boundary, and they tend to have a very low viscosity for their lava and for their magma, meaning they can flow easily. They don't really build up much pressure and go exploding. Now, the next type of volcano is a cinder cone, and cinder cone volcanoes do have explosive eruptions. They tend to be mainly basaltic in composition, but it can switch between basaltic and intermediate, sometimes even granitic composition. They tend to throw rocks high into the air, and that is actually called tephra. So rocks and ash and various tephra pieces are thrown up into the air and they just land on the side of the volcano. Sometimes a little bit of lava can come out as well and build up the sides of the volcano. They tend to be the smallest of the three. So somewhere in the size range between 200 feet to about 1500 feet on average. And they don't usually last very long. Uh, some of these may last up to about 10 years. Some of them will only erupt for a few years. So they're not the biggest, they're not the longest lasting, and they're not the most explosive. They tend to be smaller in scale. Now, here's a picture of a cinder cone volcano. And as I mentioned earlier, they can only live for about 10 years maximum. They also tend to be associated with other large magma bodies. So if you have a stratovolcano somewhere nearby, you might have cinder cones associated nearby with it. Uh, they may be a hundred, couple hundred kilometers away, but they do tend to be associated with other volcanism. Now, the last type of volcano is a composite, which is also known as a stratovolcano. Stratovolcanoes tend to be mostly anacidic in lava and their ash, or intermediate in composition. Anacidic and intermediate being the same thing. Uh, composite volcanoes tend to build up a lot of trapped gases and explode when they erupt. So a good example is Mount St. Helens, pictured over here on the right. Now, composite volcanoes, not only do they have ash, but they also have lava flows. Now those lava flows tend to be much thicker than shield volcanoes, which means the lava just sits in one place and builds up the volcano higher and higher and higher. So composite volcanoes tend to be more pointed than shield or cinder cone. Now, where are most volcanoes on Earth? Well, most volcanoes on Earth are associated with tectonic boundaries, specifically either divergent boundaries or convergent oceanic boundaries. So the Ring of Fire in the Pacific Ocean has a lot of active volcanoes. Why? Because there's a lot of convergent boundaries where the oceanic plate is being subducted under a continental or another oceanic plate. 
So over here in the West Pacific, you have a lot of convergent oceanic, oceanic convergent boundaries, and therefore a lot of volcano and volcanic islands. Over here near the Americas, you have North and South America, you have oceanic plate being subducted under the continent and oceanic plate being subducted under the continent, giving you convergent boundaries and composite volcanoes on land. Now, hotspots can also give you volcanoes as well, and they do not have to be associated with te plate tectonics. They just punch right through the tectonic plate. So Hawaii is a good example. There's one down here in Antarctica, and there are a few others. Now, for divergent boundaries, where does the magma come from? It literally comes from the mantle itself. It just floats up because it's less dense through the mantle, reaches the crust, and tends to be mostly basaltic or ultramafic in composition because there's not really much silica in the mantle. When it hits the ocean, or in the case of Iceland land, it cools down pretty rapidly and forms some very fine grain rock. Now, because it's cooled quickly, a lot of this basaltic rock tends to form either obsidian or lava rocks. Here's a picture of a divergent plate boundary lava volcano. Here is another one right here as well. As you can see, the rocks are very dark in color. Now for convergent plate boundaries, it's a little bit different. Because the magma isn't just rising up through the mantle, it also has to rise up through the crust. So what happens is in a convergent boundary, the oceanic plate will sink into the mantle. And as it sinks into the mantle, it heats up. As it heats up, it rises up and it's melted and it rises up through the continental crust. Now here's the thing. As it rises through the continental crust, it picks up silica along the way. And as it picks up silica, it becomes thicker and more viscous. And when it does that, it's more likely to plug up the volcano and allow pressure to build up. So instead of being pure basaltic or mafic rock like it was when it was the oceanic plate, it becomes more intermediate in composition. Now, intermediate volcanoes tend to erupt more violently because of their composition. They have more viscous magma, which means it's thicker and it's more likely to be plugged up at the surface and not allow an eruption to occur. So instead of lava oozing out, you get an explosive ash eruption or lava eruption from these volcanoes. So cinder cones, yes. Also composite cones or stratovolcanoes tend to be associated with convergent boundaries.